things. And it's funny, CNN and Fox never, 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 never report on the fact that this black business was destroyed uh, or that this off-duty, uh, or excuse me, this security officer who was a retired uh, St. Louis police lieutenant who happened to be black was murdered by Antifa defending the store he was charged with protecting. You don't hear that in the mainstream media. So there are two camps there, reasonable protesters and the anarchists that had a planned agenda to bring down this country and use this as the issue. Now, the end game you asked me about, it's regime change, totally. It's it's about, number one, th their short-term goal was to discredit Trump and make people hate their lives. And, of course, we blame the president when the economy has a downturn and people lose their jobs. So it was about regime change with the president. Let's get uh, someone in there, say, like a Biden, who will have uh, a dictator as vice president because he won't last a month in the White House with his cognitive decline. He'll resign or someone will take him out on the 25th Amendment and someone like Hillary will become president. And that's when the reign of terror will start. We're looking at a communist revolution and communist revolutions are always accompanied by reigns of terror. And they have set out the legislation that was put through by Obama. Now, people may not understand baseball, but let me explain something. In the eighth inning, when you have the lead, you put in what's called your setup pitcher, and his job is to maintain the lead, and then he passes the game off in the ninth inning to the closer who shuts things down and preserves victory. It was intended that Obama was the setup guy with the NDAA, where we can snatch people we don't like off the streets without due process and no one knows what happens to them. Or we can have Executive Order 13603, that was Obama's executive order, that can take complete control of the economy, steal any resource or property from a person, can move people and conscript them into slave labor and separate families in the process of doing so. And people say, oh, Dave, there he goes again. I'm sorry, folks, it's part of the uh, Federal Register. It's, it's Look legit. up under executive orders. Yeah, it's 13603. And there, this is what you and I have talked about earlier, Lisa, is that we were talking about these things five, seven years ago, and and now they're coming into possibility. I'm, I'm telling you right now, if the wrong people get in charge, in other words, if we lose this election, I don't think there'll be FEMA camps under Trump. But if we lose this election... And these Bolsheviks take over. They're not Democrats any longer. They're communists, as identified by Trevor Loudon and his great work, Enemies Within. If these communists take over, a year from now, we will see a purge. We will see people going to FEMA camps and not coming out. They're already setting up food to be used as a weapon to lure people to the camps. There are 20 meatpacking plants that are closed. Now, it would be a simple matter. Like we sent the National Guard in to do nursing duties in New York, it'd be a simple matter to keep these meatpacking plants open and send the National Guard in to keep them open so we didn't have meat shortages and food inflation and all these other problems that are hitting our food supply. But for some unknown reason, we didn't do it, and Trump hasn't taken control of the situation, and we are on the verge now of food inflation. My wife got hit with quota purchases for meat two weeks ago here in Arizona. My sister got hit with them in Colorado, Aurora, Colorado, suburb of Denver. It's happening right now as we speak. Wendy's and McDonald's having trouble getting meat. So they're going to use food as a weapon, and they're going to get you. If they don't like you, and you cross that line to get the government food, you ain't leaving that camp. And they actually practiced for this, Lisa, in 2011 under Obama in an operation called Operation Mountain Guardian. And InfoWars had a reporter on the scene that covered it very, very well. And then I was able to follow up and talk to some people who were involved in the exercise. And the exercise was multi-purpose, but just for the purpose of what we're talking about here, what they did is they went and snatched the kids from elementary schools, they being DHS and FEMA under Obama, and took them to Sports Authority Field where the Denver Broncos play NFL football. And they hired crisis actors to play parents trying to get their kids back or other crisis actors going there to try to get food. And by the time these crisis actors were mobilized, the parents who went to pick Johnny up at elementary school found Johnny wasn't in class. Where is he? Oh, the government came and got him. What? Where the hell did he take him? 
Sports Authority Field. And then they almost had near riots where they called in the Denver police and they were going to tear gas people. Um, it, this, this is what they've already practiced for. Snatching your kids to get you to come to the camp so you don't come out. Or using food as a weapon where you have to go to the government to get your food. And if you're on the list, you ain't leaving. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right, because I've studied the executive orders, the civil labor document where um, they can use people for civil labor in these camps. And you said a lot of very important things there. And look, when communism takes over, or communist, a country becomes communist, you have a communist in lead. Not one of those countries was it ever a quote unquote pretty little picture. Look what's going on in China right now. He's got re-education camps uh, under Hitler. We had concentration camps under Stalin. We just had a nightmare regime. Whether you're far left or far right, it's the same principles ruling these people. And, and if we had something similar, a lot of people think, oh, that could never happen in the United States of America. But the truth of the matter is all the documentation is there all the laws all the rules just like we said all the rules were in place for these lockdowns that they can implement even though they're they're in straight disregard to our constitutional rights they're there right and so these are the things that we warned about and now um it is a terrifying thought to think if we get some kind of uh new regime change as you called it under joe biden because joe biden wouldn't be leading the country he's half gone right so the fact of the matter is it's a definite possibility and it's a terrifying future, especially if they bring in these FEMA camps, RX-84 centers. Uh, and I believe there's 30 some odd around the country. And then there's other ones that they can convert from empty spaces into a FEMA camp, which is what we've seen done with some of the Walmarts uh, that we've seen in the past. But Lots of things are happening in our country. In your concluding thought, um, maybe just tell us, you know, what you see for this year. I don't know. Um, I, I will tell you what I think we can count on, though. I interviewed John Guandolo recently, and John uh, was one of the founding fathers for the anti-terrorist uh, outfit with the FBI. He's one of the good guys, one of the white hats for the FBI. He's retired. He's a consultant to world leaders. I had constructed um, a six-phase goals as I saw in TIFA and the takeover of the United States following. And the first was to destroy the economy through COVID. Number two was the race riots destabilize the country. Number three was mass casualty events with the embedded terrorists that are here that haven't even reared their ugly head yet, like Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, MS-13 for assassinations, because that's what they do in Central America for the cartels. And they were let in by the droves in 2015. And this is why they were let in. This is now their time and their purpose. John completely agreed with me on this point. He says, yes, mass casualties and assassinations are coming. That's the next phase. We can expect this to happen this summer. I'm with me on this point. He says, yes, mass casualties and assassinations are coming. That's the next phase. We can expect this to happen this summer. I'm of the opinion from studying the Las Vegas massacre with that country western event, I'm of the opinion that that was a dress rehearsal for what's going to be happening. Uh, I, would, I would advise people, and I hate to tell people not to live their lives, but I would not go to a country western event because they're going to assume that's where the Trump supporters are. Uh, so that's what I believe is coming. But I'll go a step further. I know the Hillary um, Clinton mentality. I know the Democratic Party mentality. I mean, you've got Nancy Pelosi, who's the, the daughter of a mafia kingpin from years ago, was in the black nobility. This is their mentality. They're evil. They're, they're satanic. Hillary goes to a church of Satan in Los Angeles once a month. And we know the stories of what they do. So there's nothing that they want evil. They're, they're satanic. Hillary goes to a church of Satan in Los Angeles once a month. And we know the stories of what they do. So there's nothing that they won't do. And I believe that they will initiate a purge within a year of being in office. And I mean, they're going to have the red list, the blue list, and they're going to come get the people that they want out of society. And they're going to take you in. Now, I do have one ad of being in office. And I mean, they're going to have the red list, the blue list, and they're going to come get the people that they want out of society. And they're going to take you in. Now, I do have one admonition for people that I think they should follow. Um, the more you can stay out of the limelight and see the, the, the thing is, is I might be retiring in November. 
there might be time for Dave Hodges and the rest of my colleagues to go into adaptation mode if we lose this election because it's going to get ugly. And what we need to do is have the roving eyes of these communists roll right over us. And, and this is the way you survive. And the way you survive is to become independent of the system. Food, water, guns, gold, ammo, medicine, tools, and then keep your mouth shut. This is how people survived in East Germany under the Stasi. This is how people survived the KGB. It will not be time to be writing editorials or doing broadcasts if they go full communist mode. I mean, look at what they're doing, Lisa. This is an attack upon the national security of the United States. It's the first step to removing our government. If you have a national emergency, like another 9-11, who were the first people on the scene in 9-11? The police and the fire. And what are they trying to get rid of? The police. This is an attack upon the national security of the United States. Uh, this is how we know this is regime change. They've infiltrated the military where they have leftist generals appointed by Obama who are saying, to hell with the commander in chief. Don't obey that crazy SOB. That's treason. These people should be thrown in prison for what they're doing. But this is the country we're in. We're in near civil war right now. All I know is I'm going to be in constant prayer. And that's what I want to encourage.